Another rainy day, boring shopping excursion to break the monotony. So uh, I hit up Dick's. It was a rainy day and I had a coupon. So I figured, what the heck not? Let's run down. I got a few things, including another retail red box. Um, but we'll start with the loose items. There's only a handful in here. And uh, I figured some of these are good for you and some of these are good for me. So uh, let's see what we got. First off, again, as always, they do have those. Uh, buy one, get one. If you buy five, they subtract the cost of the other five, but they have to be the same value. Um, so what I saw in there, for $5.47 each, they had um, a saltwater addictions. This is a bouncing bucktail, which is always great. I love that blue uh, with, the, with the marabou flash um, jig. So it's basically great for bluefish, peacock bass, um, you know, redfish, what have you. Um, it's just a really cool marabou jig. This is a heavy jig. I think it's a half ounce. Might be even heavier. Let's see if it says it on here somewhere. It's got to say it on here. Um, yada, yada, yada. Blue is the color. I can't find the weight. Patent pending. Hmm. Anyway, it feels about a half ounce, uh, half ounce lead. Uh, but I do like the design on it. It's got this keel, so it's really good in salt water. Uh, for you know going through the sand and staying atop. So that's really cool. I picked one of those up for myself Also picked up a blade jig um, This is a uh, the secret is out by silver buddy blade jigs um, Silver buddy's always been a good good bladed jig uh, to fish Just rip it and and you know vertical jig it all works well I got one of those, both of those for $5.47, so I paid for one, got the other one for free. Um, I also grabbed some Yum Tip Toads, because topwater season is here. So I got some Yum Tip Toads. This is in the Watermelon Pearl Laminate, so it's a two-tone. Um, let's see if I can open this without not nah, sealed. So you get a two-tone, you get a green, a watermelon color on one side and a pearl on the other. I like those. I got, we just had an amazing heat wave where it was, you know, 80s and 90s every day for two weeks, and then we got hit with a 40 degree day, 50 degree day, rain, rain, miserable cold, and it, it just got to me that camera lenses, my, you know, sunglasses, your fishing glasses, your, your lenses on your, on your, uh, on your fishing glasses, they, uh, I couldn't see jack squat. So I decided to pick up some bottles of anti-fog. Um, this is TYR's anti-fogging spray. You just spritz it on, uh, wipe it off with a microfiber towel, and it'll clean your lenses and prevent them from fogging. It's similar to like when you're scuba diving and you spit in the front of your mask and wipe it around. Just it becomes a little bit more of a hydrophobic solution to keep the fog and the moisture from, uh, from ruining your eyesight and preventing you from seeing. So I'm gonna throw one of these in that Christmas and July giveaway and I'm gonna keep one for myself so I don't end up in the same predicament I was in on the water the other day when it was cold out. Uh, that, and then I broke down and got two Guggen Squad baits. These are the Revolver, which is their version of the Whopper Plopper. Uh, the reason I got these, I haven't seen them in any of my MTBs. I haven't gotten them in my Angler's Hall, which I haven't received yet, although I'm like four months, uh, I believe really three or four months behind on uh, on receiving my shipment, even though I've paid for it three months ago. It's been purchased, payment's been rendered, and my uh, system has not, my, my purchase has not been fulfilled. It's still in the unfulfilled system of processing. Uh, Angler's Hall, where's my stuff? That being said, I'd like to uh, to put these revolvers up against the Whopper Ploppers, the El Chapos, etc., and see really is the hype and the buzz uh, worthwhile. I know from what I've read and what I've heard 
the benefits and the, uh, the, the overall benefits of these. Because these Guggen Squad, uh, the, uh, the revolvers, have their plopping tail in the center mass of the bait, um, you, I feel it'll walk a little bit different. Uh, I feel it will track maybe possibly a little bit more true because you don't have all of your drag on the tail end that can lift the nose and pull it side to side as you're reeling. It's in the center. You have mass ahead and mass below, behind that can kind of possibly, in my mind, uh, hold it more on straight trajectory. Uh, and more importantly, the weedless capabilities of this um, I'm hoping to see. I don't know until I get it into some weeds how weeds might collect not so much between the head and the center position, but between the center rotation and that tail section. I'm wondering if that's going to bind up and get a lot of thin weeds caught between those grooves. Um, it is flared between the head and the rotating uh, center mass point where the head is flat and then the section, I'll put it this way, the head is flat, and then the section that has the rotating flask is actually beveled so that anything that might get into that groove will then be, be spit out, will be pushed out of, of the groove by the, the or convex side of, uh, of this section. So there's a slight angle cut in that direction to help kind of jet uh, material away from um, the wire in the center uh, to keep it clear and clean, but this back se uh, section to me looks pretty much like flush. So I don't know. If not flush on this clear one, it actually looks like it's concave on the tail end. So if this is your head, then you have your center section, and that's notched that way so that as water is passing through, any material will be kicked out. But then from the center section here, it looks concave. On the tail section which would cause me to think that water is going to go into that groove and get wrapped up uh, at least that's the visual I get from this clear one at the bottom the two colors I got were silver flash which is the clear and red uh, or you know opaque and red it's got a little bit of silver in the center some silver on the face etc and some red hues and then I've got the shattered shad uh, which is that blue bluegill shad color crawfish kind of crackle paint scheme they've got going um, you know, like I say, it's my white and my dark. I would get the black one would be a second uh, or not third choice. But, uh, nevertheless, I got those to give them a little bit of run, uh, comparing them against the others. Like I said, the El Chapo and the, uh, the staple Whopper Plopper. That being all done, on to the retail red, the reason for this. So, while I was out there, like I say every month, I'm going to try to pick up one of these retail reds, and I could not resist, um... Number one, numero uno, un, not du, un in French, uno in Spanish, and probably other languages that I don't yet know. Um, so we've got ourselves our Retail Red Elite Box by Mystery Tackle Box. Um, again, these are the ones that you don't get mail order. These are the ones that you, uh, you pick up right in store. Uh, we'll see what they offer in the number one box. For fish and tackle from mystery tackle box again they just come with a red sleeve inside is your standard brown it will come out brown uh mtv box there you go uh and we will uh crack into it so i'll give you a first peek these tend to be pretty good but i don't know what number one on the charts might be i see a very common sticker right there right off the bat your typical mystery tackle box uh sticker Let's see what we got. Okay, we got some Guggen Squad stuff in here as well. Quite a, quite a bit of Guggen Squad stuff. In fact, I said two right for that. They do come, thankfully, with a product list. Uh, it's not a price guide, but it is a list, again, uh, that tells you what's in the box. So that's a good way of making sure that you got what you paid for, that nothing was pilfered, stolen, or forgotten in the box. And you can always contact MTB uh, you know, and, and let them know if you did get screwed over. Uh, another good thing to know, it doesn't apply to this, but it would apply if you go on the Shop Carl's website. They have that great new thing, what they're called, their, uh, their tackle insurance. So four items per year uh, with a 90-day purchase period. 
So if you go on to shopcarls.com uh, and you purchase an item in the $20 or less range, I believe it is, don't quote me on that, you can, uh, you can then say you lose this item. Say you purchase a jig. The jig is uh, $6.97. And you go out fishing and you catch a fish and it breaks off. You can then go to Shop Carl's website and if it was purchased within 90 days, I believe it's 90 days, um, they will allow you to actually receive a replacement free of charge for that $6 item. So that's pretty cool. It's something nobody will ever do. You, don't, you can't even go to Dick's and purchase something in the store and bring back the receipt and say, I broke it off. I want another one. They're not going to give you another one. They'll say you go buy another one, but they're not going to give you another one. Um, hopefully they'll keep in stock the same colors so that you'll get exactly what you lost. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the way it's going to work. Um, that being said, that is, that is absolutely, in my opinion, epic. Uh, of course, there are certain limitations and exceptions, uh, and there is a price limitation. So anything above, I believe it's $20. So if you get like a $22 item, they're not going to replace that. But if you get an $18 item or a $17 item or what have you, you have four options, four shots at it. Um, I'm pretty sure this is me. I wouldn't milk the system. I don't think you can get the item. You know, you go get a, an $18 item and you break it off in a week and you petition, you get it sent in say four days and then you break that off again. You're not going to get the same item a second time. I don't believe uh, it's one for each item. I would assume that's just logical to me, but I would say you have to check their, um, their actual guidelines and, uh, and what their limitations and, and, and uh, uses are for that. But we got something cool right off the top. So let's get into this box uh, from the retail purchase at Dick's. Right off the top, really cool bite, uh, bait, Mike Buka's Baby Bull Shad. This is not the Baby Bull Gill, this is the Baby Bull Shad. So in here somewhere, let me see if I can remember. Up oh, there it is all the way at the bottom. I remember the book, the box. All right. Cool color, 3.75 3 inch. This is their Gizzard Shad Tone Baby Bull Shad. Great thing about these, they have that paintbrush bristle uh, tail. That's really cool. Again, like when I got it in, in the past, I like it because if a fish short strikes it or feels that tail in his mouth, he's more apt to really honestly think that it is a real fish because those bristles as soft as they are, similar to the, the material that an actual fish's tail is made out of, soft, movable, flaky, that's going to feel like a fish, and he might suck it all the way in and not let go, as opposed to them sucking it in and getting a piece of rubber, hard rubber, hard plastic, in their mouth where they might try to spit it out. It's not going to say that they don't bite uh, you know, jointed swim baits that are hard plastic or hard rubber or wood. Um, of course, they do. We've been catching on them for, for decades. Uh, but uh, anything that will give you that extra split second of holding the fish to pin it is a benefit over the potential to lose the fish because fish will suck and spit out an item, blink of an eye. So that's pretty cool. Definitely proud and happy to get that. So that's right off the bat. Box number one is, uh, is promising. Promising. Definitely good value right there. Item, let's see, number two, we've got a Guggen Squad Scout. So, uh, hound, okay, Scout. So we got ourselves the jerk bait. This is in Pro Blue. I think I have this already. If I do, this will go into the Christmas in July. I believe I have this color. I'll just have to double check with my, my box of uh, Guggen Squad products. Four to six foot, half ounce, great jerk bait. Jerk bait is always good. Uh, Guggen's or what have you. I like Strike Pro. I like, um, you know, obviously your Zuri's. Uh, I like a lot of JEM products. So, uh, Guggen's, um, I've never heard anything bad about their jerk bait so far. So, and I think the media would have blown up or the, the YouTubers and the, the, the uh, you know, the, the, the influencers, as I like to say, would have definitely uh, ribbed Guggen's if their jerk bait wasn't good. So, there is that. Next, another Guggen squad. This is the Hound, which is a top water. This is sort of a walking bait, semi-popper. It's four and an eighth of an inch, half ounce. Uh, this is in their sexy shad color. It's not a really cupped popper. It will spit water a little bit. Um, I do have a similar bait to this. Let's get this 
buddy tape off. Be secure for sure. It's not cut my hand. Um, with a very similar cup, uh, and it will spit water, but not not a whole lot. It's really more or less a top water walking bait. Um, the cup actually just gives you a little bit better walking action because it does hold the nose. It keeps it a little bit further back as you're popping your rod. It doesn't jet forward nearly as much because it does give you that extra bit of res resistance on the front of the bait. Wonderful pattern. Love the details in the gill plates. Uh, feather treble. Um, sticky shark hooks, which is good. So that is the Guggen Squad's Hound. That's our third item. There's nine items in this box from what I'm looking down, so... Well, I just jabbed that sh ultra sharp hook right into this silver <laughs> paper that was underneath there. All right, there we go. Um, next up, Carl's Amazing Baits. This is their Catchco brand. Carl's Amazing Baits Golden Boy. Golden Boy. So we have ourselves... I think I also have this. Golden Boy, this is a two and a quarter inch... Uh, third ounce in the chartreuse gill little lipped crankbait so it's a little square bill crankbait great color again i'll check and see what my uh what i have in my box this also might go uh, if i have it i don't need duplicates and triplicates and quadruplicates of everything uh another googans so three googans in this box uh you can kind of expect it because it's all coming from catchco and catchco and the Guggen Squads, uh, you know, banded together. So, box number one, heavy on the Guggens. Uh, Guggen Squads, the Hummer. And the Hummer is their version of the buzz bait. So, this is their topwater buzzer. Um, I think from what I hear, it's pretty well, it's a real squeaky bait, which is good. That's what you want. They do have, you can see it right there, they do have a little green rubber ring uh, that they put over the ends of their wires so that does basically what my um, my uh, not so hard to tie uh, and I'll link it up here in a card uh, on how to get your buzz baits spinner baits etc when they just have the wire spun and they don't have a dedicated way to tie your line on where that line knot can slip down slip up get chinked and kinked and and frayed because of uh, you know abrasion on the wire itself on the bait itself and cause all kinds of problems Guggen Squad was very good at having little rubber bands put on the ends to actually loop off and dedicate that front end of the wire specifically as a line tie so that you don't have to worry about the line riding in any one particular way down towards the hook or up towards the in this case the buzzer or your willows and Colorados and uh, uh, um, uh, what have you, blades. So uh, that's pretty cool. Interesting to try this. I haven't tried their buzz bait. I've tried um, their their willow Colorado leaf uh, spinner baits, but I've never tried the buzz baits. This is the first buzz bait I've ever gotten from the Guggen's squad. So that's cool. All righty. So that's the Guggen's out of the way. <laughs> 10,000 fish. We're still sticking with catch cup. 10,000 fishes. The Shimmer Shad. So we've got these before. These are a great little drop shot finesse uh, bait. This is the Blue Shad. Um, they've got that little foil inside that crinkles. And on a, on a very tiny bladed jig, um, these are great because they have that little spunk tail, that little single tail on the back, which is absolutely epic for fishing chatterbait style baits uh, because it does vibrate with the tone of the blade as opposed to a lot of paddle tails or even fork tails that are massive behind it it will throw the cadence off the the tail of the bait of your soft plastic will not resonate the same speed as the blade in the front and it can just kind of make things not so appealing to fish so uh, those kinds of things are great i wonder if because the stealth blade is a smaller size um chatter bait it might even be a little bit too big for this. This might be a little bit too small um, of, a, of a bait. It's a four pack, and let's see, what size is this? I didn't even tell you. Uh, three inch. I think you'd need like a four and a half or five inch uh, bait, but it might be doable. Uh, I'd have to I'd have to offer it up uh, against the, uh, the, the uh, Chatterbait Stealth Blade to really see if it would fit. That being said, this style of bait is epic for Chatterbaits. Um, that's cool. 
Three to go. Biospawn Biobug. I love these. These are great. These are epic. And these are in the green pumpkin. Uh, another seven pack of the Biobugs by Biospawn. I love these things. There's a million ways to, to shoot, uh, to use these Texas rigged on the back trailers of jigs, um, on the stand ups, on shaky heads, uh, for, on punching. These things are great for punching down through mats when the weed cover gets a lot more uh, as the summer carries on. Nice, great crawfish pattern as well. And you, you can fish these backwards uh, with, the, uh, with a nail weight on the front. And what I would say, fishing these backwards, which I have done, rig your hook up through this end as if you are trying to swim this like you would on a jig for that fish tail profile. And use one of the VMC skirted nail weights so it puts a skirt on the front that'll pulsate as this is swimming away and down and away from you. And you'll, you'll see that it'll swim down and away and it'll kind of zigzag and do crazy crap. It does a really weird, weird action. Maybe I'll, uh, one day I'll show a couple of baits that I do that backwards rig. Um, it was funny. I came across, <laughs> I came across a video from uh, a local New Jersey guy. Uh, you might all know, a guy by the name of Mike Iconelli. Uh, you might have heard of him, I don't know. I mean, Jersey people aren't really famous anywhere, really. <laughs> but uh, Mike kind of rehashed an existing uh, video. So he went and he showed a video about a week ago uh, that he calls the, uh, the tail-weighted French fry. Old, old school way of fishing. It's exactly what I do with uh, creature baits, which is you weight the away side of the bait, you hook it Texas style style to the near side, and you leave your hook or your, your line unweighted. So you're not you're not using a Texas rig or a Carolina rig. There's no weight on the line. You're Texas Texpose rigging the hook so that's you know fairly weedless and the tail end of your soft plastic trailer, or in my case a lot of creature baits, it's the nose end because I'm rigging it backwards with the tail end being on my line tie side of my hook. You put a weight, nail weight, and that weight will then cause the bait to fly away circa the flying lure of the 80s and the 90s. Well, this is an old technique. It's a technique that I knew a long time ago as well. I mean, the flying french fry was just basically using a flat-sided uh, Senko, flat-sided worm, uh, to do the same thing. He tends to use, because he's a Berkeley, uh, you know, member, he, he sells Berkeley, he's part of the staff. So he sends those, those Berkeley... Uh, Senkos, I forget what they're called. I guess they're called fries or whatever. But uh, they're only a single flat side and the top's round. Uh, the original fry was actually square. It was a, just a long sl uh, square box shaped all the way down. Crinkle cut French fry looking thing. And believe me, we are, you know, I'm 40 odd years old. <laughs> and we used to use them. But um, he did this video last week. He did the exact same video over a year ago. So he's just recycling uh, techniques that have already existed, which I, you know, personally, you're never going to see me redo a video. So I've already done a video on how to, uh, again, how to make tying a buzz bait or, or, a, or a spinner bait, uh, easier on people. I am never going to come back three, four, five years from now and redo that video and sell it to you like it's something new and fresh because I'm not, the, to me, it's a little bit appro it's, I'm apprehensive because it feels like he got X number of views on it a year ago. Now he's gathered more viewership and he's just doing it for clicks. He's doing it for financial gain because now he'll get twice as many views on a video he's already done. I'd rather just say, there's a link, go back to the original video and, and watch it from a year ago. Uh, that's just me. I just think it's kind of misleading that it makes you think that it's a new technique. I will never show you something that's new if it's not new. I will explain. This is something that I've done for several years, and I'm bringing it to you. You may not have heard of it. It's new to you, but it's not something new. Uh, backwards rigging baits is not something new. It's been done forever. So with that in mind, um, I will leave a card up here for that video on how I back, backwards rig some stuff. Um, next, next but not least, uh, last but not least, uh, <laughs> well, almost last. Hard hat jigs, again, another catch co item. Hard hat jigs, diesel jig, 
Uh, this is really cool. This is in that Okeechobee Craw color. I love that blue green pumpkin color scheme. That's great. And finally, I mean, we all know what the jigs are. That's a 3 8 ounce. And finally, we have the Eagle's Claw Laser Sharp Wide Gap Worm Hooks. Um, great three pack, size 4 aught, Eagle Claw Laser Sharp. Damn good hooks. Get them at Walmart, get them anywhere. It's nice to have. They include those, they have the vial bugs, they'll go hand in hand, uh, a four aught and the vials. Um, yeah, not bad. Uh, a lot of Guggen Squad stuff with the Scout and the Buzz Bait and, or excuse me, not, yeah, the Buzz Bait, the Scout and the, uh, what's the other one? Oh, the Walking Bait, yes. The Walking Bait. Um, all in all, not bad. Pretty impressive for box numero uno. Um, so, again, I hope this was enjoyable. Uh, didn't want to make this too long. I know it rambled for about five extra minutes, maybe ten. But uh, tell me what you think. Do you think this was a good, a good pickup? Um, I hope you enjoy. As always, be safe out there. Enjoy your holiday weekend. And uh, from me to you, I will catch you all on the next cast. And peace, Hookholics.